we are so happy that you are watching HSN. My name is Marlo, and we Hello. have the debut of what we are calling Cooking Along with Kitchen HQ, and it's actually the official title show yeah. because this happens to be Chef Shahir, and we did kind of a test of the show. We did a little test run. Yeah. People loved it. And you guys said you loved it. The show. So it's official. Here we are. We're doing it. We're doing the show. As a matter of fact, mark your calendar. The next show is going to be September 12th. Yep. 10 a.m. Yep. with Nicole Hickle. That's going to be the next show. It's going to be fun. So let me tell you a little bit about the show because it's going to be, it's a different vibe yeah. than our traditional show because this is a show where the chef actually teaches us how to cook. He's going to be making all sorts of delicious foods. I, of course, get a chance to eat. Um, and there are lots of tips, lots of techniques that you get to learn. And the fun thing is, is that you get to buy all of the different wonderful products that he is using in the show. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Here's your part. We want to hear your thoughts, your questions, and we want you to engage with us on social media. So in a couple of moments, I'm going to be getting an iPad, and I'm going to be asking you to come on in and say hi and to hear from us. All right, Chef. You ready? What are we going to be eating today? Okay, let's eat. Marlo, let's cook. Okay, so today is all about Kitchen HQ and how our products are designed to make your life easier in the kitchen, but you need recipes to help you out, to make life easier, more approachable, and really the star of the whole day is all about cast iron. We're gonna start off with our nine inch cast iron pie pans and how to make the perfect pie, quiche, fruit pie, savory pie, even just using it as a, as a little roasting pan for a single chicken breast or a single piece of fish. It's absolutely great because cast iron gets hot, stays hot, and is all about even heat distribution. When you think about grandma cooking with cast iron in a pan, why was it so good? It's because you got even heat, whether you're searing, frying. In this case, you get even heat when you're baking, when you're roasting. So let's talk about the perfect pie. Here I've got my basic pie crust. It's just flour, butter, an egg yolk, and a little bit of sugar. I like sugar even in a savory pie because it gives it a little bit of color. So a basic pie crust, that's not the hard part. The hard part is how to bake it without your pie crust shrinking. I know it's happened out there. Without it getting too light or too dark. You need the right conductivity of heat, and that's why cast iron is your friend. That's why we thought about it at Kitchen HQ. So I take my floured pie crust that I made. It's nice and cool to the touch, which you want a cool pie crust. If you get a hot pie crust, it's gonna shrink as well. So put your pie crust into that nine inch, which is the perfect size. And what we're gonna do is a little technique called lift and pinch, lift and pinch, lift and pinch, get it in there. And that way we get it into our corners. If you can see that shot, if I get a little crinkly part here, I lift and pinch again. It's the lift and pinch. If you have a tear, don't worry about it. Just squeeze it tight together. Not gonna ruin anything. Lift and pinch. And again, this is just flour, butter, an egg yolk, a little bit of sugar, pinch of salt. That's not the hard part. The hard part is making sure it doesn't shrink on you, it doesn't get too dark, it doesn't get too light. And so that's why cast iron really is perfect, even for a pie pan. It's not just for searing and roasting and any of that. It's great for baking. So if you have a pie pan at home that's glass or aluminum or, uh, you know, one of those more quote unquote traditional materials and you get inconsistent results or you get it shrinking or you get it too dark or you get it too light, cast iron is your friend for baking sweet pies, savory pies, even cookie bases, crumbles. But like I said, you get two. So I like to use one of them for a chicken breast or a piece of fish when I'm just mm. cooking solo, right? It's non-stick, it's oven safe. So just as a little roaster pan, it's wonderful as well. Now here's another thing. If you have any excess crust, kind of poking off the side, take a paring knife, dull side, look, and you can kind ah. of trim it. Now, unlike traditional cast iron, don't worry about using your metal utensils on the Kitchen HQ version. So it's not gonna scratch, it's not gonna stick. Notice I didn't grease my pie pan. You can just put it in, it won't stick. So now I've got my crust, super easy. And Marlo, I'll put up a recipe for a basic pie crust because I think it's important for any home cook to have. But once you find that you have the actual right vessel, like cast iron, the actual recipe is easy. You got the tools needed to get the right results you want. So in here, no, I was going to say one of the yeah. things that I wanted to share with everybody because we did like a little, uh, a little meet, uh, a little meeting earlier. You yeah. were you were saying to me. 
how much in the Kitchen HQ line, just across the board, yep. how amazing our cast iron is. Whether Absolutely. it's the pie pans or any of the cast iron. The like skillets, the, the skillets. brazers. Yeah. We're yeah. going to do a griddle later today yes. as well. The reason being, you get the benefits of cast iron, which is just even consistent heat retention. That's why when you're, break, when you're braising, you're baking, roasting, the temperature does not go down. Okay, when you get temperature fluctuation when you're baking, you get your pie crust shrinking or you get it too pale or too dark. Same thing with the griddle later that I'm gonna show you when we make the ultimate smash burgers and salmon dinner. The heat will be consistent and constant and not go down. But here, I'm gonna do my first kind of pie recipe. Now this pie crust is universal. You could do a sweet or savory application. I'm gonna start savory with a quiche. And the reason why I like a quiche, it's almost like the perfect fridge dump meal. You got eggs, you got leftover veggies, you got a cheese. You can make the most ultimate quiche. You could serve it hot, you could serve it room temp, you could serve it the day before, or sorry, the day after, I should say. So it's one of those things that I think everyone should have in their repertoire is how to make the perfect quiche. So here I've got my pie crust. Over here, I've got eight eggs in my Kitchen HQ tiltable bowl. And why I love the tiltable bowl, Marlo, we talked about it last time. Whether I'm making a quiche or a scrambled egg, the key to having a light, fluffy interior is to kind of get air into your egg. And so I love being able to tilt it over, whether I'm scrambling my eggs just for a scramble or a quiche, or whether I'm whipping cream, which I'll do later, or making vinaigrette. We thought of everything. Having that kind of angle where you can have it flat without it spilling to get the air into your quiche is super cool. So a little uh. bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Don't forget to season liberally, everyone. This is eight eggs we're talking about, okay? Got it like that. And now I'm gonna take some cheese and I'm talking about one of my favorite cheeses, Pecorino. Everyone gravitates towards Parmesan, right? Pecorino is its saltier, nuttier cousin. Mmm. <laughs> it's got a, here, it's got a here. little bite to it. Yeah. And I love, in a quiche, having a little bit of saltiness, mm. a little bit of nuttiness, that right? That is good. What I like to do sometimes in a pasta dish, for example, you can go 50-50, Pecorino and Parmesan, just to give it that extra nutty yeah. kind of a little good. bit funky, but not too funky. Now yeah. here also, Kitchen HQ, we've got a six piece peeler set. You will be mind blown by what this thing can do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grate my cheese with my peeler set and all these kind of functions pop out. I'm gonna turn it from a grater to a slicer to a julienner. Is that a word, Marlo? A julienner. I just made it up. I like it. <laughs> okay, so there you go. There's my cheese grater, right? Stainless steel, put it in the dishwasher, I'm gonna get my pecorino in there. Salty, nutty, sheep's milk cheese. If you're not into that little bit of funk and salt, just do parm, absolutely. Last time we did this show, I talked about Gruyere. Love Gruyere, or Swiss cheese would be lovely. Get that cheese of choice. Fridge dump your quiche, here we go. Now watch this. I said it was a six piece peeler. That little lip right there pops open, just like that. And now I can put on that kind of slicer mandolin attachment, boom. I'm gonna put some veggies in my quiche. So this is that thing where you got leftovers from the night before. If you bought zucchinis on sale, you don't know what to do with them. Throw them in your quiche, absolutely. So it's now gone from cheese grater to mandolin. Look at this, even slices, beautiful, right in there. Think about doing your cucumbers for a salad. Think about carrots for a salad. This is not that big, bulky, scary mandolin. So again, at Kitchen HQ, we thought of everything. Oh I want you to be gosh. able to take any vegetable that's kicking around in your fridge and throw it into that quiche. So here I've got some zucchini. A good time for zucchini too, as we head to you know, sure. the end of summer, that's right? right. That's Use right. them up while you got them. Get that in there. Chef, I'm gonna get in there because yeah. I, I wanna um, invite everybody, if, if they'd like to buy the tilting mixing bowls, yep. they're available and the teal and the red. Those are great to have. Obviously, the nine inch uh, pie pans. Don't forget that those yep. do come in the two pack and they're available in the red and the teal. You're more than welcome to shop the show and to shop for any of the products that we're offering. And, you know, we are extending our Labor Day uh, weekend. And so five flexible payments on everything in this show today. So it's, cool. it's a fun day to shop Kitchen HQ yep. and to try some of the recipes. I'm learning so much here um, in the show. And oh my goodness, this, this is great. Now this is great, this yeah. is also from Kitchen HQ. It's our push chopper, check it out. I've got some shallots, some bell peppers. If ever you had like half a bell pepper kicking around in your fridge, this is the time to use it. Shallots I love because it's got that essence of a red onion, but a little more mild, right? And then you give it a couple chops. 
What's that? Five Mississippis? Look at this. Perfectly diced, everything even sized. Your bell peppers, your shallots, whatever you got kicking around in your fridge, you can throw now into that beautiful quiche, right? Take a little spatula here and get it in there. So think about bell peppers are lovely. We're gonna do some herbs in here as well. Shallots, you could do garlic. And Marlo, I did film some video footage with all these things, so check it out on hsn.com. You can see, I love that push chopper for garlic, for herbs, for my veg. I mean, look, my prep is done. Guys, can you see in my tilting bowl, I've got the shallots, I've got the peppers, I've got my zucchini, I've got the eight eggs, okay, that I incorporated air into with that tilting action. I've got the zucchini that's just coming out of season, which is great, it's the right time to finish up your zucchinis, and in you go. But really, I mean, it's super versatile. Whatever you wanna throw in that quiche in terms of those mixed veggies, whatever cheese you love, it's gonna work. Pour it into your pie pan. I love savory pies. Now, that might look like it's a little low, but don't forget, as the eggs cook, what do they do? They puff up. So it's gonna go up to the top. Don't fill your quiche all the way to the top. And right at the end, I love to put dollops of goat cheese, right at the end. Oh. So that it kind of melts on top. Even when it's done cooking, you could pop it under the broiler if you want to give it some color. Now this is gonna go in, Marlo, 350, 45 to 50 minutes. You want those eggs to set all the way. Wait till that pecorino melts all within it. Super delicious. And you're gonna see the virtues of cast iron is not just for an old school pan with searing and braising and roasting, which of course is perfect for that. It's also great for baking your pies, savory sweet, your crumbles, all of that, because you're gonna get even consistent heat you will not get that shrinkage. You won't get the shrinkage of your crust. And it won't be pale. It won't be dark. It'll be perfectly golden brown. So that's 350. And 350 is the magic temperature, I find, for most baking of pies. All right. That looks great. Hey, we've got a lot of people coming in. Don't forget to get social with us. Uh, we need to be giving everybody some shout-outs now. And uh, mm. I definitely... Oh, my gosh. Look at this. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Look at this. we got to get a look at that, right? Okay, so... Beautiful. Notice. My crust did not shrink inside. It's perfectly golden brown. It's not pale, it's not dark. It's like ideal. You got the bubbling goat cheese right on top. You got those zucchini in there. I love it, okay? Now, I wanna show you this too. Don't forget, I didn't butter it on the inside either. It's totally nonstick. I can use my metal utensils on my Kitchen HQ cast iron, unlike old school cast iron. It's not gonna scratch, it's not gonna stick. Now this, to me, is a light lunch or it's a brunch. You could serve it room temperature. You could even serve it cold from the fridge. I think it's lovely either way. So it's one of those recipes, so versatile. Great for feeding a crowd, brunch, breakfast, a light lunch. Serve it with a side salad, right? So good and so easy as well. When you've got the right tools, you can do this at home. That looks great. We have Jerry on our Facebook oh, yeah. page. We have Jerry now and look, Annie. We have Frank that's there. So I want to give shout outs to all look of you that. that are joining us on Facebook. Uh, definitely keep your comments coming in. I want to hear from you. That looks amazing. What type of drink would you pair with something like that? Well, good question. Marlo, now we're talking. Are we talking <laughs> brunch? Are we talking breakfast? We're talking brunch. We talking... Well, let's, 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 let's do... Let's... I'm a mimosa guy. Ah. I'm a mimosa guy. I'm a simple man. All right, I like I a like little it. bubbles, a little fresh OJ. Okay, yeah. I like it, I like it, that's perfect. Why not, right? So perfect. Now, and fast and easy. Super fast, super easy, and like I always say, especially when it comes to baking, baking actually isn't that hard. The, the challenges people have with baking is they don't have the right bakeware, they don't have the right equipment. Now you and do. It, and now you do. Yes. So, yeah. you know, with baking, when you talk about flour, butter, sugar, that's not hard. It's when you're using aluminum or steel and you're having un you know, inconsistent results and you say, ah, I can't bake. It's not about the recipe, it's about what you're cooking with. Well, Michelle Michelle says yum. It's great. Uh, I would love to hear, by the way, and I love the Facebook interaction, what veggies are you throwing in your quiche or your tarts? What, what cheeses are you using? I'm using pecorino, I love how salty it is. What are you using? You know, are you using gouda? Are you using a smoked cheese? Now on top, Marlo, Fresh herbs, every kitchen has to use fresh herbs, in my opinion. Fresh herbs, way better than dry, because you get that, I mean, you could smell it from here. This is just straight up parsley. You could do cilantro, you could do mint. It's not comparable to dried herbs, but here's the thing. People dread using fresh herbs because you gotta take out the knife, you gotta take out the cutting board, you're bruising your herbs. With the, pull, with the 
press chopper, I did it in five seconds, and I like to cook with herbs at the end of the cooking process. Had I put in my fresh parsley and baked with it, it kind of gets dull and it kind of gets brown. Finish your dishes with fresh herbs. Try parsley, try chives, of course. Chervil, if you can find chervil and tarragon, really delicate wow. French herbs. I know, sometimes a bit tricky to find, but I said it last time and I'll say it again. Tarragon is the most underrated herb on earth. <laughs> tarragon and eggs are friends. You did tarragon, say that. basil, they're all good. So Marlo, I want you to try this. Sure. Uh, you've had a busy three hours now, two hours. I have I had a busy day. I think you deserve day. to eat a little, right? Absolutely. And you know, I, I think you can have this I for lunch I want to give a shout out to Diana Hedge, Hedgepath. Diana, thank you so much for your lovely comment. I appreciate that. And we've got a lot of people that are coming in. If you'd love to give us a shout out or if you have any questions for the chef, yep. uh, please come on in. We definitely want to hear from you. We want to mention to you that um, Kitchen HQ um, is our proprietary brand here at HSN and we love this signature show and this show is meant to feel and look different so we know that it is a different format yep. than your than your traditional shows here at HSN that is deliberate and that is intentional this show is um, supposed to be about teaching you fun and new recipes yep. uh, for the chef to offer his expertise. It's about your engagement. Um, I have given you the next show date, which is going to be September 12th. Um, Nicole Hickel will be your uh, host that day. Um, but it's also yep. about you shopping and yep. uh, having an opportunity to be able to bring these fabulous products at home. So we've talked about the push, press, and mix uh, chopper that yep. you can certainly order. Yep. Definitely the two pack of the nine inch pie pans. You gotta go cast iron cross the board, whether it's your brazier, yeah. your skillet, even your pie pans. I love that nine inch size. For sweet pies, savory pies, I'm about to do a crumble where you don't need any pie crust. You're just putting fruit in a crumble topping. You know, really you can get super creative with it. Again, I like to use it when I'm just roasting a single piece of chicken or fish. You throw it into your oven, it's oven safe up to 500 and it's non-stick. So when I'm gonna show you this really sweet, sticky cobbler, you don't have to worry about the cleanup after the fact. And Marlo, don't forget that six piece peeler set, which I really love. Yes. I didn't show you that application as well. It comes with a peeler, just a handheld peeler, which is great as well. Now, let's talk fruit cobbler. We're not gonna talk about pie. We're gonna talk about cobbler, which is like my favorite fall dessert as we head into fall. A great way to save some money, and I know food costs are really skyrocketing out of control. You can cut the cost of all the fruit by cutting it 50-50. So I'm gonna go 50% of canned peaches mm. with my fresh strawberries just to kind of stretch my buck a little bit, sure. okay? I just want to find those little incremental ways to save a little bit of money. So I've got the canned peaches, Kitchen HQ, we thought everything. The first item ever way, sold. Chef. Is that good, right? It's amazing. It's so pecorino. <laughs> How's that nutty pecorino, amazing. right? Amazing. The first item ever sold on Kitchen HQ, on, on HSN was a can opener, an old school can opener. I'm sure you have one in your drawer right now that's rusty and really hard to, to kind of get around. At Kitchen HQ, we designed a one-touch can opener. You saw me press the button once, Marlo, and it goes around the can, not inside. When a can opener, like old school ones, get inside, that's how they get rusty. So we designed one that goes right around the lip and will never get inside. And look, there's a magnet mm, that takes the lid right off. So I'm not fighting with it. There's no sharp edges. There's no sharp thing to rip off. One touch, all you do, press the button, it goes around the food, and look at this, Marlo. Totally safe, here and here. I'm sold, right? I need this. Everyone needs to upgrade their can opener. Now, if you have that rusty one where you're kind of finding the edge and fighting, yes. this is your can opener. Definitely okay? want that. One touch. So now, into my tilting bowl, I'm gonna take the canned fruit, and again, you can find you know something that's on sale. This is peaches. And it's just a great way, like I said, to kind of stretch it out a little bit. I know cost of food is going up so, so high. So if I wanted to go straight up with those fresh strawberries, you know what, next thing you know, that's a $20 kind of crumble, <laughs> you know. So this is a great way to kind of say, I'm willing to go $10 on the crumble, yes. but I still want to fill it all the way up, right? So I've got that. I'm gonna show you another one, Marlo, if you want. One touch, put it on the lip like that. It goes around the can, That's not so into the food. Cool. It's so simple, and yet it's those simple solutions that we're all about. We took something as, as basic as a can opener and said, okay, how can we improve the design of your standard can opener? 
so it's not gonna rust, you're not gonna wrestle with it, and I showed you my famous kind of trick, you won't cut yourself on it as well. Chef, I'm gonna get in there because yeah. this actually comes in four colors. So that's the red, but it comes in teal, white, and black um, as well. So you can certainly order from those colors. And this ties in nicely because I just um, did a full hour of a kind of EcoFlow and yep. emergency preparedness. Absolutely. So this is great because you're a, ready to go. a lot of can owners you have to kind of plug in with this when you're, you're, you're ready to go. You can well, take this Well, by the way, anywhere. you should stock your pantry with great canned items like canned chickpeas, which we're gonna talk about next. You know, have those canned staples, but then you don't want to be fighting with an old school exactly. rusty can opener, right? Boom. <gasps> Did you see that? Was <laughs> that too fast? That's awesome. <laughs> There's the magnet, and it lifted the lid right off for me. I didn't wrestle with it. I didn't rip it off of a jagged edge, and I could mm. run my finger right across it. Nothing's going to happen. It goes around the food, so it's never going to rust. Nice. I think this is the first thing my mom ever bought from Kitchen HQ. So thank you, Mom, because she's been <laughs> wrestling with that old school sure. can opener, and you don't want to do that. So I'm going to just throw in a couple more peaches, okay? Now, a traditional fruit cobbler is literally fruit, cornstarch to help thicken it, some sugar, you can put some vanilla extract in there, but because I'm using some of that canned fruit, I don't need the cornstarch, it's going to thicken by itself, and I'm going to take my fresh strawberries here into my Kitchen HQ press chopper, put the lid on, and chop away. And again, in like five Mississippis, boom, look at that. There's my strawberries. Imagine what you can do now with your fruits, your vegetable prep, your herbs, your garlic, your onions, a quick salsa, an egg salad in seconds. Just like that, super easy. And then this four blade goes into the dishwasher, which is wonderful. So get those chopped strawberries in. Find a canned fruit that's on sale. Why not? Go 50-50. And then if you find the fresh fruit that's on sale, some blueberries, strawberries are wonderful. It's really hard to mess up a cobbler. A cobbler is one of those things that should be in your repertoire because it's great to entertain with. It's great to use whatever's in season. And unlike another dessert, you're actually not messing around with any pastry, really. So take your second pie pan, which this is, again, Marlo, I think this is great. You get two. I know. Which is totally cool. Throw your mixture in here. Like I mentioned earlier, if you weren't using this little hack, which is 50% canned fruit, all you would do with your fresh fruit, your strawberries, your blueberries, your blackberries, is toss it with some cornstarch, toss it with a little bit of sugar, and that's about it. You could put some vanilla extract in there as well. Maybe a pinch of cinnamon if you like. Now there's the base for my cobbler. Super easy, super affordable. It doesn't get more simple than that, right? And again, the can opener made it easy, which I love. Now for the cobbler topping, we're gonna go into the push, push chopper, a little bit of brown sugar. I love brown sugar. If you don't have brown sugar at home, guess what's the hack? Use white sugar and put in some molasses. That's Ooh. basically what brown sugar is, right? So if you don't have brown sugar at home, that's all you gotta do. I'm gonna go quick cook oats. I love oats in my crumble topping because, well, I feel better about myself eating it for breakfast. That's number one. But number two, it gives you a little bit of nuttiness. It gives you a little bit of texture as it bakes up, gets a little extra crispy, which I really love. A Little bit of white flour. You could even go 50-50 white flour, whole wheat flour, if you're into that kind of thing. My wife likes that. Okay, and a little bit of cold butter. It's gotta be cold. If the butter is hot, that crumble mixture is gonna melt and not kind of retain its structure. So you wanna make sure it's cold. A little bit of salt, a little bit of cinnamon, which I love, especially again, as we head into fall. If you wanna do a pumpkin spice crumble, you add now nutmeg and cinnamon mm. and those earthy fall spices. You could go a little bit of, you know. Yes. A pinch of coriander even. A little bit of vanilla. All spice would be great in here also, right? Again, if you want to do that kind of Definitely. pumpkin spice vibe. Definitely. Definitely. Now, I'm going to give it a couple chops. Look at this. All that flour, the butter, the brown sugar is incorporating. But just like with a crumble topping, similar to if you're making a biscuit dough, which you could do in here as well, I want the butter to be about the size of peas. Sometimes in a recipe you see that you want it to be pea sized, not too small, not too big. And that's about right to me, okay? If it's too small, it's gonna melt. 
and it's gonna become greasy. If it's too big, it's gonna be consistent. So pea size, you could do a simple biscuit dough in here. The first pie crust that I made, I made it in my push chopper. So it's not just for prepping onions and garlic, you could do simple kind of baking tasks with it as well. So I'm gonna get that crumble, mmm. I smell the cinnamon. I do too. I love it. But hey, like I said, if you wanna go pumpkin spice crumble, add nutmeg, add allspice, add a pinch of clove, not too much, just a little bit. And then you've got a pumpkin spice kind of crumble. Imagine entertaining with something like that come holiday time as we head into the fall. Again, 350, this one will go before about 40, 45 minutes. It's gonna be bubbly, but I'm not gonna worry, Marlo, because it's nonstick. I, well, I tell you what, holiday's not so far away. So that's what I love about these. Now it's time to kind of get everything at home. Okay. Look now, at how amazing that looks. Now, look at this. Now, here's the thing also about cast iron. Yes, you get even heat retention. You get even cooking, oven safe, all of that. It stays warm. So this crumble I pulled from the oven, I'm feeling it now, is still warm to the touch. And I did this about an hour ago. So think about now yes. you're entertaining, right? and you wanna maybe just bake it ahead and keep it warm for your guests, cast iron is perfect for that as well. You can go to the holiday party, you can go to the function, keep it warm. But before I serve it up, Marlo, I'm gonna do it super quick. I'm gonna whip some cream for you. Ooh. Yeah, because you gotta have whipped cream on top. Yes, just please. a little bit, just a little bit. What's everyone saying out there? What, what do they want in their crumbles? Monica uh, Grace Watson is saying, if I need any help eating, she's the first volunteer. Okay. <laughs> So she's gonna be your first live guest. We're ready for you, Monica. Yes, Monica is We're ready. the first live guest in the studio. It's a hard job here. Yep, she's, she's coming in. Um, Annie Shelton is saying she needs a good can opener, so yep. she's looking. Um, let's see, we've got a lot of people here. Frank is saying, um, oh, he was saying, is that just a can peaches or a peach pie filling? So he was talking about the filling that you use. Good eye, it. you can use either. And really it's about just kind of spreading out that fresh fruit to save a couple bucks. But also, like I said, oops, like I said, you don't have to worry about the cornstarch and the extra sugar if you're using the store-bought pie filling or, or right. store-bought. Monica also bought the can opener, by the way. You gotta have the can opener. Yep. No more wrestling with that old school yeah. can opener. Sharon Tully actually said that she loves Kitchen HQ. She loves the cheese grater. You, she talked about how great it works. Yep. Um, and she was ama uh, amazed at how much um, it grates the cheese. And so, um, Annie also says she volunteers. Uh, she would like to uh, come in and, and uh, eat as well. So a lot so, of volunteers and eating. I wanna know, like, how many people are getting excited about, you know, a lot of the fall recipes? Because, you know, yeah. for the fall and the holiday season, there are many dishes that we just kind of bake during this time of yeah. year. And so I know that, you know, the Labor Day weekend is yeah. kind of the official end of summer. And so during this time of year, I know I start oh. getting excited about some of the dishes well, um, I love fall oh flavors look because at look at that. Oh my god. So gosh. even though they're canned peaches, when you when you get the fresh strawberries in there, when you get oh. that brown sugar crumble on there, you kind of don't miss the fresh peaches, to be honest with you. Look at that, Frank. Frankie. <laughs> now hold on a second, Frank. Hold on a second, Frank. I love the tilting mixing bowl because as you guys saw, as I was rudely whisking over you, Marlo, <laughs> sorry. You can see that with that angle, I can make my own whipped cream in real time. Oh, Marlo. This one's for you. Ah. Uh, I love it. It's simple. If yeah. you're a never baker, if you said, look, I can never bake, look a at crumble that. you can do. Come on. <laughs> right? I want to know what Frank thinks about the, the addition of the strawberries. Yeah, it gives right? it that kind of freshness. But I want to show one thing real quick, super important. Nonstick is key. Look, sugary fruit. Look at the bottom of my pan. So I'm not worried about cleanup, whether it's a crumble, a pie. I'm not dreading cleanup. I'm not soaking it. A little hot water and you're good to go. So this is the cast iron you want in your life. This is the, this is the mm. ultimate moment. This is the taste test. That's amazing. That's good, right? See, for me, the strawberries really, to me. They come through. Yes. So you get the fresh, but you also kind of save the buck by kind of spreading it out. Now, that said, Marlo, we've That's done cast wonderful. iron 101 with our nine inch wow. pie pan. Coming up right after the break, mm. we're gonna talk cast iron, griddle, smash burgers, and the ultimate sheet pan dinner with salmon, asparagus, and chickpeas. Coming up. Join these seasoned chefs for a candid discussion about their cooking experiences that you can only find on HSN Plus.
So what's your earliest memory of cooking? As soon as you can stand in my house, you cook. It's got to be an egg, a fried egg. Watch now on HSN+. Plus. Here at HSN, we base our retail values on nationwide information. Retail value is an indication of the price you would expect to pay for the same or similar item elsewhere, not the price at which you would be able to sell the item. Prices do vary around the country, so ours might be different from prices in your area. For more information, call one of our customer service reps at 1-800-284-3900. HSN. to have you watching HSN. My name is Marlo Smith, and this, of course, is Chef Shahir. And we are featuring for you Kitchen HQ in a wonderful format that's a little bit different from our traditional cooking shows. This is an opportunity for you to be able to see Chef Shahir prepare <laughs> wonderful recipes for you. And I get to the opportunity <laughs> to eat, to engage with you on social media, and you get the opportunity yep. to really learn some wonderful techniques for, and tips from the chef. And it's a fun format of the show that we love. The next show will actually is actually scheduled for September 12th yep. at 10 a.m. And that's gonna be with Nicole Hickel, so we can't wait, and so we love it. And we've just been motoring right along. Yep. I wanna give some shout outs to many of you. Uh, we've had Frank in our social, on, on Facebook. We've had Monica and Annie that's there. Uh, Sharon Tully is there. So many of you. So thank you so much. I'll be calling out a lot of your names that are here. One of the main questions that a lot of you have been asking um, is um, on the peach pie. Yes. So it's actually a great point and I think it came from Frank. We used a peach pie filling but yes. you could use just straight up canned peaches or canned apples or yes. whatever you got. So great point because peach pie filling is different than just straight up canned peaches. Yes. But both would work equally as well. The difference being if you buy pie filling, oftentimes it already comes seasoned with things like cinnamon. So just read the label. If you don't see anything like that, then you add your own cinnamon or add your own flavors, etc. But Frank, thank you for engaging with us. That's actually a great point. That's a great point. And in our first half, um, the chef prepared a number of dishes. And I want to let you know that everything from the mixing bowls yep. to the chopper to the two pack of the pie pans, those are all items that are available. The can opener yep. that a lot of you purchased, those are all still available to purchase and shop for. And because we extended our five flexible payments so today is a great day to be able to have those delivered at home. But this is part two. Part two. And so what are you going to be preparing? Okay, so we're talking cast iron the whole day. And now the star of the show is the 18 by 13 cast iron griddle. This thing lives on my stovetop. And the reason why it lives on my stovetop is it's cast iron, even heat, heat retention, searing steaks, roasting, baking, all of that good stuff. But that size is perfect for big batch pancakes, French toast, eggs, bacon, hash browns on the same cooking vessel. Boom, that's just breakfast. And then when you talk about lunch, you're doing your griddled sandwiches, you're doing your sheet pan dinners. It can be co used cooked directly on the flame, which is how I love to use it. It can be used into the oven, which we're about to do with this amazing miso glazed salmon. Or it can even be used on your grill. For example, I know Ty likes to put his out there and use it as a pizza stone. So oven safe up to 500 degrees, super versatile, and you get the attributes of cast iron, even heat. If you put cold salmon onto another surface, it's not gonna get equal color, equal browning. With cast iron, it does. So let's get into that miso glaze. And of course, it begins with miso. Miso paste is a fermented soybean, which sounds kind of funky. And it is funky. It tastes great. It's go it goes in your marinades, your sauces. It belongs in your pantry. And definitely look out for miso. And into it, I'm gonna add a little bit of soy sauce. I'm using low sodium soy sauce. And this is the great part about making your own marinade or sauce you are in control. A little bit of miso, a little bit of low sodium soy sauce. 
Some nutty sesame oil. This is another pantry staple I think everyone should have, okay? And then, a little bit, Marlo, you know I'm from Canada. Yes. Maple syrup, good old maple <laughs> syrup. Now maple syrup in this miso glaze is gonna give us some color because it's gonna caramelize as we roast with it. But also it's a natural way to sweeten, so I'm not necessarily loading up on sugar. I had enough sugar with my cobbler, which was great. But cook with maple syrup, cook with honey. It's a great thing to add into something like this. And then, that tilting motion again, I've already used it to kind of whisk up my eggs. I've used it to whisk up my cream, which I whipped cream in real time. And now I'm gonna get those chunks of soy, excuse me, miso into the soy, into my maple. Super easy. This to me is better than buying a store-bought teriyaki because you're using pantry staples. You gotta have miso, trust me. You gotta have soy sauce. You gotta have sesame oil. These are things that are gonna live in your pantry that you're gonna use over and over. By the way, this glaze goes great on pork, on chicken, even on beef, right? You can marinate your kind of, your ribs, beef sure, ribs, anything, anything, right? Delicious. So now, because I can tilt that bowl, I can pour it right onto my salmon fillets that are waiting on my cast iron pan. Now, like my pie pan, that cast iron is non-stick. So I'm not lining it with parchment, I'm not lining it with foil, I'm not worried about that stickiness being a pain to clean up after, okay? Non-stick means easy cleanup. So look, I have that sweet miso glaze. If you had, by the way, sesame seeds here, would be a lovely addition right on top, right? How good is that? Like so now I've got that ready to go. Beside it, we've got the asparagus, and we're talking about a sheet pan dinner. And I want to show you my peeler of how we're gonna peel the asparagus if I can find it. Where did I put my peeler, Marlo? I'm gonna find it oh after. Boy. I'm gonna find it after, but first then, I'm gonna show you my chickpea hack, okay? So we're gonna get that peeler in a second, but now we're gonna get our chickpeas. Now I love, one touch can opener, roasting chickpeas. And a lot of people don't think about this. They just see kind of a canned item and like, ah, that's kind of boring. Yes. When you roast your chickpeas, something magical happens to them. Mm. They get golden brown, they get crunchy. And if you want that late night snack, that's not a potato chip, that's not a peanut. Roasted chickpeas is your friend. Coat it in some olive oil, which I'm about to do, get some spices, throw it into your cast iron, 18 by 13, and let it get hot. Let Ooh. it get golden brown, right? And that's what you want to do I'm for gonna healthy really snack. I really love this because I already love chickpeas like yes. oh, in my salads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So roast As a salad it? topper? Oh my goodness, this is gonna be a good tip. This is a hot tip. So roasting, by the way, a can of chickpeas is like a dollar? Exactly. Right? Dollar fifty? Most? It's a wonderful kind of snack. Never so, had them roasted? Have you ever roasted them? No. Ask everyone on Facebook if it, by the way, there's my can I'm opener. gonna buy I now. always do it too Guys, fast. Guys, let me Look. know. Let me know on Facebook. If totally you, safe. All right. Um, let me know on Facebook if you've ever had roasted chickpeas. Now, here I've got my chickpeas in the liquid, and there is a name for this liquid, by the way, everyone. It's called aquafaba. And if anyone out there is a vegan, I got a hot tip for you. The, mi the mixing bowls, the tilting mixing bowls are actually a two-piece set. So you get the colander set. I'm straining my chickpeas over. And on the bottom, you have aquafaba. Aquafaba literally means the liquid of the chickpea. And if you're a vegan, right, this is your whipped cream substitute. This you can whip up, add some sugar, and it looks and acts exactly like whipped cream. So check out aquafaba. This is a real thing. This is a that's culinary hack. That's a great hat. tip. Uh, that's a great tip for the vegans out there. Yes. So I'm going to add my chickpeas to the bowl, and now we're going to get into some spices. A little bit of paprika. If you want some heat, you can put some chili flake in here too. A little bit of garlic powder. It's such an awesome snack. But also, it plays an important role in our sheet pan dinner because it's a low carb, super healthy, one pan dinner, and I'm using cast iron to crisp up those chickpeas. I'm using the power of cast iron to get beautiful color on my salmon. I'm using the power of cast iron to get even cook on my asparagus. So sheet pan dinners are still a thing, Marlo, because you want less dishes to do. And we want the power of cast iron without Worrying about cleanup. Get those roasted chickpeas. Look how good they look. Little pinch of salt and pepper also. And forget about it, right? Like, this is great for dinner, but then make an extra batch also just for snacks, that late night snack. Tilting mixing bowl right on top. Look at this. They're gonna get golden brown. They're gonna get beautiful. And now I've got my peeler here. So that peeler comes with the six piece set that I showed you earlier with the mandolin and the grater. It would be worth it just for that. But you also get this two-sided peeler 
which is amazing. On the, other, on the first side is just a traditional peeler, stainless steel, super sharp, and you want to peel the ends of your asparagus. Oftentimes people say just chop off the end. You don't really have to chop off the end, but if you peel that tough exterior of the bottoms, it's still totally good. It just so happens that as you go lower down the asparagus, it's really kind of hard to eat, and that's why old school cooks would just say chop it off. You don't really have to chop it off. Again, food is getting expensive. Don't, you know, don't waste it. So a little bit of olive oil right on top. I've got my miso glazed salmon, which is really easy. We did it in real time. Got my asparagus, a little salt, and a little bit of pepper. Look at the size. Now this is what I'm talking about, 18 by 13. I can do chicken thighs on here with a potato, with a vegetable. I could do my steaks, my ribeyes. I could do my salmon. It's great for breakfast, great for dinner. It's great just as a sheet pan, oven safe to 500. But then after I'm gonna show you how it works as a kind of griddle and you feel the quality, I'm telling you, of cast iron. It's like old nice. school cast iron, but nonstick. Yes, nice. So uh, Debbie Smith was asking, how do we get the recipes? We're gonna be loading the recipes on our website tomorrow, Debbie. So yep. check tomorrow on our website though. We'll be loading them on our website tomorrow. Barbara, thank you so much for saying that you love the show. We appreciate that. It is a new show. It is a little bit of a different format. Yep. Um, um, we want to be able to, you guys have said that you want to learn more from our chefs. Yeah. And so um, we tried this format a couple of weeks ago. And so we just- It's fun. Yeah, we decided, hey, it's official. Cooking Along with Kitchen HQ is official with Chef Shahir. Yeah. Um, many of you said how much you love learning from him. And so we love it. Um, let's see, a lot of comments. Frank said that... Frank is back. Yeah, Frank is back. Frank! So interesting thing I was about worried. Frank, he said roasted chickpeas were a staple of his growing up. He said that his mom cool. um, of Italian descent used to cook them a lot. Now, you know what I love you said, Marlo? Roasted chickpeas on top of a salad is such a great idea. Yes. So when you roast chickpeas, just like in our sheet pan dinner, it's wonderful just plain like that. It's great as a snack. Like if you're a late night snacker like I am, yes. which I am, I need, a, I need a nice cold drink yes. and a crunchy snack. Chickpeas are wonderful. But you said something incredible. As a salad topper, sometimes with salad, you get a little bit bored, yes. and I get that, right? <laughs> but the way to make a salad exciting is to figure out different ways to have different textures. So crunchy chickpeas on top, a great thing. Crunchy sesame seeds on top, yes. yes. Find ways to incorporate textural contrasts great so idea. that you don't get bored while you're eating a salad, and then you're gonna do it more often. That's a great idea. Right? Yeah, Nancy says she's never had a roasted chick peas but you know that I love that we can she can try it which is something try fun. It out. right they're inexpensive yeah but they're really delicious so. and it's one of those things where it's like one of those things that you pass by the grocery store almost every time yes. and it looks like a boring can of chickpeas and you're like all right <laughs> what is that's it? not so exciting but you can make it exciting right with cast iron it will get golden it'll get crispy it'll get be sometimes with that 18 by 13 size I'll actually do two cans of chickpeas and just make a big batch of crispy chickpeas ah. and have them as a salad topper, have them as a snack, just have them ready to go. Our good friend Annie Shelton says she's noticing that you're using those tilting mixing bowls a lot. Yes. And so she's like, you know what? They inspired me to do more cooking. And so yeah. one of the nice things about every, everything the chef is using, they're all available. So whether it's the can opener or those tilting mixing bowls or obviously the, sh the sheet pans that are available yep. and the red or the black. Remember, everything's available um, for you to purchase if you'd love. And so, Annie saw me tilt the bowl for a reason. Like I'm incorporating air into eggs. I'm incorporating bringing air into whipped cream. I'm using the lip to pour my marinade right on my salmon. But what are you making now, though? Okay, so, now, you wanna know my favorite meal of all time. Yes, I'm, I'm, we wanna know. I'm almost embarrassed to admit it. The classic American smash burger. No way. I love it. <laughs> because when you think about it, it's, are you kidding me? It's salty, it's fatty, you got the beef, you got the cheese. <laughs> I, I love I a smash burger. I didn't expect that, honestly. That would be my last meal. Yeah. Which wow. I hope it's not. <laughs> I hope it's not. Things are going well, Marlo. I hope yeah, it's let's, not. Let's keep things going. But I love a good old fashioned, you know, smash burger. It's kind of like the new thing. Well, it's been a thing for quite a while. So here in my tilting mixing bowl, I've got my beef and I formed it into four ounce balls, right? So if you want a double burger, that's eight ounces in total. If you want a little burger for the kids, I think four ounces is a, is a great size. I got my push chopper again because I love on my smash burger a little shredded, shredded lettuce. Boom. In seconds, there's my shredded lettuce. Guys, can you get that shot? There's my shredded lettuce for my smash burger. 
in seconds. No knife, no cutting board. Life is easy. So I'm gonna set that to the side. While my now griddle is heating up, which is almost there, because it's cast iron, it's getting hot pretty quick, and it's gonna stay hot. Little bit of oil. Now, by the way, cast iron, when you think about your grill outside, those grill grates are made of cast iron. That's right. So why is a griddle actually better? A griddle is better because you get more surface area. Your meat is touching more of the cast iron. So you get a consistent crust on your burger. So that's why the smash burger has taken off, right? Because it really is about getting more browning on more surface area of your burger. It's not just a fad for no reason. So I'm gonna get my griddle nice and hot. Imagine how many burgers I can do on this. Imagine how many pancakes I do on this on Sunday morning, which I am the pancake master. Imagine French toast, the grilled cheese, all of that stuff, right? So this is like restaurant cooking with a griddle, indoors, outdoors, throw it in the oven like I did with the salmon. Now Marlo, look out. I'm gonna, We're gonna I'm, get I'm hot gonna, here. Yeah, I I'm see gonna, you can feel it. Yeah, I'm gonna actually sit back a little sit bit. Sit back, because just, I'm gonna get hot yeah, here. Yeah, they, they, okay. Yeah, We're live, and so I don't want there to be any And I don't want you splatter. to get any grease on your shirt. Here you go. I'm gonna do four smash burgers right here, okay? Little bit of salt. Now, it's fun to cook in our studios, Marlo. However, we have no hood fans here. Guys. So of course at home, you're gonna get your hood fan going. Now, you get a little salt, you get a little pepper, you take two spatulas, the smash of the smash burger. Okay, oh, that's interesting. Oh, baby. You're going with, at that with metal utensils. Metal utensils. Non-stick. No worries, right? We thought of everything. We want you to be able to have that even crust, that perfect smash burger. Imagine searing your steaks here, your, your ribeye steaks, your pork chops. I do chicken thighs on here. Look how many chicken thighs I could fit, right? So this is now taken over my everyday repertoire. Like I said, it lives on my counter for this exact reason. It's great for proteins. It's great for searing something like a halloumi. We talked about making salads exciting. Sear a piece of halloumi on there. Throw it on your salad. Do it with your proteins. Sear your vegetables. Use it as a sheet pan dinner vessel. Turn into a brunch cook and do eggs on one side, bacon in the center, potatoes on the other side. There's nothing you can't do with this, and this is why I love it so much. Like I said, it's one of those things that can live on your cooktop. It's big enough, two burners can be using it at the same time. 18 by 13 is the magic size. Wow. Right? I gotta and get this. I'm gonna buy you this. You gotta get this thing. Yeah, I don't... And this is all about even heat. It's just as hot here as it is over here. So, you know, even though it's just the two of us, if I was feeding a crowd, I don't know, I could put eight burgers on here, and this is what you wanna do. All right, lots of comments coming in. We've got Millie that's saying she loves this program with the chef. She loves your easy recipe. So, um, I've got to go back here because um, to find out, someone wants to know, when's your cookbook coming out? It's out. It's out right. already. Is it available? Yes, Google they, it. They want it on the show. Oh, we got to get it on the show. Yeah, they I wrote want a book it on the show. a couple years ago called Eat Habibi Eat. You're going to love it. Check All it right. out. All right. So There's that grater again. Here's my cheese. Easy. Uh, oh, it does smell good though, Marlo. Teresa Betty <laughs> says she loves your new cooking format and the chef. So I love that. So thank you thank so you. much for your comment, Teresa. Um, and so keep those comments coming in. Um, Andrea Moore says that she loves the show. So we appreciate that. A lot of the comments coming in. Um, my Facebook page had to refresh. So I can't go back to see some of the other previous Ooh. comments. So this is come what on you in. want. Oh my gosh, it this smells. This is what you want. <laughs> it's smelling good. It does smell really good in the studio right now. Look at the crust. So that's what you want from a smash burger. That even heat that you're getting from cast iron is gonna get you the perfect in fancy culinary terms, the Maillard reaction, that golden brown, right? That's what you want. That's where the real flavor happens. So and that's why smash burger is so good. So Terry wants to know, is the sheet pan flat on the bottom to cook on a glass stove like a yes, griddle? Yes, absolutely. All right. I'm cooking right now because we're in studio. Hello, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm cooking on two induction burners. So it is totally flat on the bottom. Yeah. So this is now your sheet pan for doing a dessert. I did a pavlova for doing cookies, you know, for doing sheet pan dinners, all that stuff, right? Andrea wants to know, how long do you traditionally cook your chickpeas? Okay, great question. So, depends on time and temperature. 425 for 20 minutes, you're gonna get a golden brown crispy chickpea for sure. Yeah. And you're gonna love it. 
It's gonna be a pantry staple for you for snacks and for that sheet pan dinner. Now I use my can opener again, one touch, totally safe. Wait till you see that. Chopped chilies, which are great. Let me check my burgers. They're looking and smelling good. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Oh yeah. Yes. And That's... I'm gonna throw some cheese on here. Don't forget, non-stick. I don't have to worry about that cheese melting and being a pain to clean up. It won't be because it's non-stick. So that's just four burgers, Marlo. So I can do, I don't know, you've had a long day. We can have two double burgers, right? But look, I could do eight to 10 burgers on here, no problem, well, right? Well, we got a lot of friends that, that are nearby. A lot of friends in, in the Orlando that's area right. that are willing, yeah. That's right. Hazel McDonald says, what a lovely surprise. She thought this was gonna be uh, kitchen items, but got some good ideas too. She says, love watching the show. So thank you, Hazel McDonald, for your comment. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. Um, and so thank you all for engaging with us. And and I love when people add comments, Marlo, and engage. Let us know what you're thinking out there. Let us know how you like your burger. Let us know what you would do in your pie pan or what you would do in your sheet pan. 18 by 13 is the magic size. Whether you've got a family of four or even up to six, eight. You know, it's the right capacity and the right material. Cast iron is your friend. And traditionally, we think about it in terms of like a nine inch skillet. We talked about our TS coming up next week, which is a beautiful brazier. But having this griddle live on your counter is a great thing to do for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner. It's like a griddle, it's a sheet pan, it's hey, everything you want wait it to be. a second, you slid something in there on us. Yeah, what, here? Did you do a big reveal and say we've got a Today Special from Kitchen HQ coming up next, next week? week? <laughs> I'm here next week, all day. Did you say it's a brazier coming up next week? I got week? the brazier, cast iron. I love that, yes. you heard it first. And I believe that's coming up on the 12th. Look at that, so it's coming up on the 12th. So you heard it first, and by the way, that is going to be the next show yep. um, of the Cooking Along with Kitchen HQ, and that's gonna be at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, lots of questions coming in. Did Jeff. you see my onions, by the way? Let's, I just let's chopped onions look. in four seconds, look at this. <laughs> I love this press chopper, right? You're doing your onions. I did my shredded lettuce earlier. I did my veggies for my, uh, my quiche. It's in seconds. No knife skills. Your fingers are not in the way. Pick up that press chopper. I love it. All right, so a uh, Sharon Are you an onion person? I am indeed. Okay. Uh, Sharon Tully needs to know the name of the cookbook again. So it's called Eat Habibi Eat. And really, my parents are from Egypt. And I was born and raised in Canada, and I kind of put Canadian, Italian, French spins on those Egyptian dishes that I grew up with, and every Egyptian mother screams at their kids, eat, Habibi, eat, you gotta eat. <laughs> Check it out, it's a great book. All right, and then and Andrea Moore wants to know, can the sheet pan be used on a gas burner? It can, and I do, I have gas burners at home. Do you like heat? I do. Chopped chilies I do, thank that you. I open with my can opener. Yes, so I put mine on my natural flame, it's the size where you can put it under two flames. So like I said, I love it for doing, you know, not just my smash burgers. I'll do steak night and do my potatoes on one side, a couple ribeyes here and some veg over here. Oh my gosh, these burgers are looking so good right now. They smell delicious. <laughs> they look so good. Right? <laughs> I cannot wait. So you can do really anything you want on that 18 by 13, which I think is so great. Okay, Annie Shelton is asking, yep. what is the best cast iron sheet pan sitting on to do the cooking. I think she might be asking if, I, I think. Oh, on the induction burners. I think they're the induction yes. burners, so yeah. So again, you could put it on your induction burner if you have an induction cooktop, you can put it on your gas, you can put it on your barbecue. I mean, that could be your pizza stone outside. Wow. Because what is a pizza stone? It's something that gives you even color on the bottom, even heat, and can get up to 500 degrees. So it could be your pizza stone outside, it could be your sheet pan, my salmon's almost ready by the way, it could also be your griddle. So you're doing your pancakes, your grilled cheese, your French toast. Sometimes I'll do eggs on one side, bacon in the middle, hash brown on the other That'd side. Right. I'm turning into like a line cook at home, which yeah. is awesome when you're feeding a crowd. This is great to buy, especially for right now, because you know, yes. with the holidays coming and you're gonna be cooking for, you know, your family, definitely place your orders. One of the things that I want to mention, because there are only a couple of minutes remaining, yeah. Everything that we have presented in the show is available for yes. us to ship to your homes. So take advantage of the final day of the five flexible payments and, and get the items at home. We always give you 30 days. Certainly we enjoy learning all the recipes and, and getting all the great tips and techniques from the yep. chef, but certainly get the items at home and, and try some of the recipes for yourself. And they're all kind of approachable recipes as well. I think that's so important when you're talking about cookware at home, when you're talking about how to become a better cook. Yes. You wanna have 
the cookware that you know is gonna be easy to clean, that you can use. But you also want the recipes that are approachable. So that's why we love this kind of hour. I want every viewer out there to kind of feel like, hey, I can do that. It's not hard. Even something like that, that pie crust that we did earlier. It's not hard. It's about having the right materials, right? In my bowl, by the way, Marlo, I'm gonna do a little secret sauce, little secret burger sauce, mayo, ketchup, relish, paprika, garlic powder. And before you know it, it's gonna kinda look like that secret sauce. You know it's what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, shall I assemble a burger? I mean, this is ready to go. I'm I, starving. I will tell you, they look amazing. I'm starving. I'm gonna bake you one, okay? And we haven't heard from Frank in a while. I'm a little worried, I'm gonna be honest. Is Frank still out there? Let us know what you're thinking. <laughs> But whoever's out there, I love that you're engaging with us on Facebook. What are you putting on your burger? Are you a fan of the chopped chilies? Are you a fan of extra mustard? What's going on? Could you do a smashed turkey burger or chicken burger? Keep it leaner. Absolutely you could. This is one of those things, like I said, it just lives on my stovetop. Whether it's natural gas, induction, there's that secret sauce. Throw it on your barbecue, a little bit of the shreddus. Shredded lettuce real quick. Marlo, you've been working hard for two, three hours. I get it. By the way, Frank is still there. Frank is still here. Good. Yes. He's still I there. was worried. We <laughs> haven't heard from Frank in a while. Little sauce on either side. Smash Burgers 101. And we did it in real time with that secret sauce, with that crusty Smash Burger. But think about your steaks, your pork chops, your chicken, your fish, your vegetables. Using it as a griddle, using it as a sheet pan that you throw in your oven up to 500. Letting it just live on your barbecue also. Don't forget, those grates on your barbecue are made of cast iron. The difference here is you have surface area. And that's the secret to searing a steak, a burger, a scallop. Here we go. Marlo. I got one burger for you living here on the corner. And I just want to show everyone before I hand it off to you. You got that. That is what you want from a smash burger. You see those craggly, crispy, yes. you know, really dark bits. That's what you get from the surface area of your cast iron. That, that is what you want. The ooey gooey melted cheese. Now look, remember that melted cheese. It didn't stick. That's right. My metal utensils. I don't worry. I'm not worried about cleanup. Life is good, right? Look at this. Yes. Frank, where are you, Frank? I made it just for you. <laughs> We have a lot of volunteer taste testers out there. I've got, I want to know, Frank, if you can right. chime in, where, where are you from? I'm just, I'm just curious to know. And I was, I was the chickpeas, chef. Yes. Yeah. The roasted chickpeas. You think they're ready? Well, they're about, they're, we only have about a minute. Let me go take a, and a look. And a half left I in the show. I think they might be done. I'm hoping that we have yes, enough yes. time. So um, Lisa Shep, no, was, uh oh. It looks good, it smells good. And this was, I think, I don't know, 15 minutes? Look at this. There's my sheet pan dinner. Oh, wow. Don't let me get my burger in the way. Here's your burger, Marlo. Okay. I've got now the miso glazed salmon. I've got the asparagus. I've got my golden brown crispy chickpeas. Here's a secret with the chickpeas, by the way. They will harden as they cool. So they're still a bit crispy, but as I let them cool, they're gonna be really crispy. Really? So don't worry about that. If you pull your chickpeas out of the oven and you're like, oh, they're a little bit crispy, they're gonna firm up as you let them cool the room temperature if you want them as a snack. So check this out. You got the miso glazed salmon, you got the asparagus, you got the chickpeas. You could obviously do a little potato here, sweet potato would be lovely. That sticky miso glaze. Guys, can you see this? My salmon is dancing on there. It's not sticking. 18 by 13 means I could throw it in the oven, I could throw it on my grill, I can keep it on my stove top, I can use it as a griddle, I can use it as a sheet pan, and I get cast iron. Why cast iron? You get even heat from corner to corner. It will get hot and stay hot. When you're searing, when you're roasting, when you're even baking a pavlova, cast iron is the best in the kitchen, better than aluminum, better than steel, because you're gonna get that even consistent heat. Whether it's a pie pan, a griddle that's 18 by 13 or anything else. Look at that and it's non-stick. Well, we, that is a perfect place for mm. us to <laughs> invite you to tune in next week, September 12th, yep. 10 a.m. That's also going to be the day of the Today Special from Kitchen HQ. Thank you all. There's so many names to call. Kathy Clark and Frank Perry <laughs> and Brenda Cooper and Patricia Junkins oh, and Sharon Tully and Annie Shelton. Yep. 
and all of you who engage with us. Mm. It's called Cooking Along with Kitchen HQ <laughs> with Chef Shahir. Thank you so much. And mark your calendars. He's here next week with today's special on September 12th, a Lots brazer. Of cast iron. We're gonna have fun. And of course, the next show is going to be at 10 a.m. Stay tuned. Debbie D is coming up next with more fun. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Have a great evening.